Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today, check it out, it's the Spark Flymore combo, and today is going to be the flight test, part one. I'm gonna have multiple parts of the flight test since there's so much stuff you can do on this, and also since this is the Flymore combo. Um, the first flight test is going to be just testing it out with a cell phone, and even without a cell phone. So just trying the really simple selfie functions with and without a cell phone. And then the part two of the flight test is gonna be with the uh, controller it comes with, full-fledged controller and we're gonna test be testing the range and how it flies with the controller so look out for those videos I already had the part one um, review of the unboxing and stuff and I did some updates and stuff so check that video I'll go ahead and have a link in the description and also a card pop up up here so you can check that out if you want to like a close-up look on the bench of the thing I pretty much fully inspect it and go through like the whole setup and everything so anyway, I have my daughter Sanaya here. She's going to help me out and she's going to help me do some of the, you know, tracking functions and stuff and see how that performs. She's going to be kind of running around the park. So I'm just turning on this anemometer and we can see that from that direction, it's blowing about four miles per hour. It was gusting up to about maybe six. So this will give you an idea of how it is and just a little bit of wind, just so you know how it performs. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna just set this thing up from scratch, how it is just in the case. So you get a good indication of you know how much time it takes to link to your cell phone, get it started, make sure there's enough satellites locked on, and then we'll go ahead and start flying it. This is gonna be a bunch of fun. We're gonna also test the return to home, how accurate it is. I have this little helipad here. Um, we're gonna put it through a lot of paces right now. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Okay, so as you know, the first thing we gotta do is, of course, is turn it on. And I just wanna go over this bag real quick. It does have a nice tall strap, so if you wanna just put it around your shoulder like that. Or also, check it out. So the strap also serves as more of a shorter handbag strap. It just has that kind of sliding mechanism here, which enables you to make it larger or smaller. So I just wanted to go over that real quick. And also, um, this is how the whole thing looks in the bag. It will fit the charger also in there. So you could hold in uh, three batteries. It only comes with two in the Flamware pack. So I have one in the drone, one on the side, and then I did order one more battery. I w really wish it would have come with a total of three. That would have been awesome. So you can store, um, you can have three batteries in it. You could probably squeeze in more batteries, but if you wanted to hold the charger in there and everything, it gets pretty tight, but it does hold everything in this package. Really nice bag. I got two sets of propellers up here. Well, a full set up here, two and two. And that's kind of how I have the bag laid out. I do have the controller here, which we'll be testing in the part two of the review. I want to go really in-depth and thorough in the controller. So I'm going to give that its whole own review and we'll probably be doing some range testing with that. So let's get started with the setup. So just pulling the drone out. And first thing you want to do before, um, you know, you do anything is just power the thing on. And you can, you don't have to, but you can extend the propellers a little bit. I noticed that just like the Mavic, it does get a little bit wobbly when it first starts up if you don't um, extend the propeller. So maybe a good idea if you have the time just to extend them out just to kind of get them started. Otherwise when it does kick on it might be a little rough on the motors to always wobble a little bit until it spreads out the propellers with inertia. So I just like to spread them out. So single press, solid press, press and hold until the lights come up. We're seeing the propellers just jerk a little bit. It's booting up. We hear that DJI infamous chime there. And let's get the cell phone started. I am gonna be recording this cell phone as well for you so you can see actually what's going on with the cell phone also. And of course, first um, you wanna make sure you're connecting to the Wi-Fi on the, on the Spark. And you know what? I think I should mention that. I already did this in the house, but in order to connect directly to your phone, what you need to do is when it's powered on like this, you hold in the power until you hear three quick beeps. And that means it's kind of in Wi-Fi mode directly to your phone. So if you can't figure out why it's not working on your phone and why you can't see it in your Wi-Fi connection settings, I'll just show you this real quick. You see how it's connected to the Spark 46A6C7? 
um, I couldn't get it to even see the spark until I pressed the, and held the power button while it was powered up until you hear those three beeps you got to hold it for like three or four seconds and you're gonna hear those beeps so anyway now that's out of the way let's go into our drones go into the DJI go 4 app make sure you download download that from the Android or the Apple it will work for both it's doing its version check and now we're ready to go fly so I'm just gonna press go fly here right on the screen and it's giving us our aircraft status and kind of like we went over on the bench it's giving you all this information here if you need to upgrade the firmware if you have any problems with the um, sensors and stuff and the compass calibration I already did that but let's just go ahead and go through the compass cal real quick I'm gonna close that now and you can see that we have the FPV screen displayed now we're already at 94% power because I'm talking so much so <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna go through this compass cal really quick because we do have two batteries and I want to make sure I go through quite a bit of stuff so what we do is we go into our settings you saw at the top right those little three dots and then we press on the quadcopter icon here and then we're gonna scroll down and of course this is where you can adjust all your stuff and I want to go into advanced settings sensor state and there we go so you have a little tab IMU and compass you see how the IMU is looking good XL and the gyro are in the green so they should be good clicking on the compass the compass is good because I already did this calibration but I'm gonna go ahead and calibrate it with you guys so I'm pressing on calibrate and it gives you a little thing on the screen of what to do so the first thing we need to do is make sure there's no magnets or metal objects between 1.5 meters I'm gonna move this bag away and move this box kind of back here a little bit all this equipment here so give yourself 1.5 meters clear of anything even the cell phone I'm not sure how much this is going to influence or the camera on my head but we'll do it anyway so it's saying just follow the screen directions rotate doesn't have to be a quick rotate just as long as you rotate it and then turn it on its side might need to put the phone down then do a rotate like this on its side a few times until there we go so we just got a compass cal complete and that's it cool so we're ready to go and we're looking at our GPS satellites so on the top of the screen you see GPS and then we have a little satellite icon and there's 18 satellites right now so we should be a-okay so since I want to test the return to home while we do all this I'll go ahead and just launch from here I also want to launch it from my palm my palm I'll show you guys how you can do that also while you just put the phone in your pocket but we'll just do a launch here we'll go through some functions and then we'll do like a gesture control with the palm and that's a whole different story so I'm just pressing the launch on the screen and then sliding to take off there we go so it's going up to look like three three something feet 3.5 feet or 3.9 feet and there we go so it's just gonna sit there until you tell it to do something and what I want to do is start recording so I'm gonna press record on the screen and now it is recording and we can see some virtual sticks on the screen here so I'm gonna take it up a little higher bring it back down so that was actually our full this is full uh, downward vertical speed see how slow that is with the controller and let's try full upward thrust again with the phone so full up it's definitely faster going up full down a little slower going down 1.6 mile per hour going down full up 4.5 going up so there's your speeds for up and down with the phone control I think it's a little faster when we get the regular controller going some breeze coming in we can kind of feel it let's give this thing a little walk around before we go ahead and fly it and there I am in the screen hey guys oh and the sensors are actually going off you can see on the screen there it's telling us that something is six feet away as, as I get closer it's sensing that so this one has the front sensors which is cool and as you can see it's hovering very solid DJI is known for just having an amazing hover on their crafts and I'm doing really good I'm really close to it right now 
so you probably shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> Get out of the way. Okay. 79% power, so we better start doing some stuff. And first thing I want to do is just fly it around with the phone and then we'll get Sanaya to do some active track and stuff. So that's full pitch forward. And full yaw left. So really docile with the stock settings. You can see how nice and easy it's flying. Woo, that's full forward speed. And it's seven miles per hour. Okay. This is just regular GPS mode. I'm not even sure if you can go into sport mode with just the controller. So it's maxing out at seven. Uh, horizontal speed. Okay, we already did the vertical speed. Let's try our yaw rate just standing still. Let's see how it looks. This is a full yaw to the left. Let's bring it down a little bit. There we go. So you see how slow the yaw is? And that's because this doesn't have any yaw gimbal control. So I think they pre-program it to really be have a slow yaw just to have that video more stable. Cool. So that's our yaw rate. And don't don't forget guys that we'll have the video at time to time popping up and also the recording from this phone so you can see the controls, everything that's going on. Awesome. Let's see what we want to do now. Let's see if we can do a let's see if we can activate like an active track. Oh, you know what we want to do? Actually, let me try the obstacle avoidance. So I'm going to go away from me here. I'm going to fly as fast as I can directly into me and see if it stops. Wow, so it really stopped good. Look at that. It had a really hard back angle to just stop itself right in the air. It didn't even need any kind of room to slow down at all. That's awesome. Let's try that one more time. Full throttle forward. Saw that? Inches and it just stopped from its full. So that's great. And that's all it has as far as opt optical avoidance in the front. Cool. All right. Okay, I'm just checking it out here. What are we at? 64% power. Okay, we got some more power. You know what we'll do is we'll do the range test with the phone right now. So I'm gonna go straight up. Oh, oh my goodness. Butterfly, honey. Ah, sorry butterfly. Just killed a butterfly. At least it was instant. Uh, I feel bad about that. Anyway, on to testing. I'm full throttle up. There's a nice view of the West Maui Mountains, Malaya area. I'm up in Kula right now here in Maui, in Hawaii. Okay, so there's a preset maximum flight altitude. Height is 164. Um, with the phone, I'm not sure if you can go higher than that because it needs the Wi-Fi signal. And it's already saying poor radio channel quality, so you probably don't want to fly further than that with just the phone. Let's go down a little bit to maybe 100 feet, and then I'm gonna go straight out. See how far that way we can get. I'm all the way down, it's going as fast as I can. It's only dropping at like 2.2 .2 maximum miles per hour. And it's going slow like that, so it doesn't get that kind of shake and wash, getting its own prop wash and stuff. Wow, that was interesting. For a second there, it showed a misreading on the feet. Okay, so from this height, actually it's down a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Let's go about here. And I'm gonna fly straight out, see how far we can get. So from here, I'm gonna go straight forward. There it goes into the sun. Sorry about that, the sun's in my hat cam. But you can't really see it anymore. We'll just, we'll just look at the screen and I'll have the, the video up there on the screen. So I'm just full forward. I'm not touching any yaw, and let's see how far I can get if I just kind of hold the phone in front of my face here. Um, we still have 51% power, so we should be able to get to the max distance of the phone. It's going 4.3 miles per hour max. It's slowing down a little bit. It's slowing way down. I think because it's losing signal. Okay, the phone just said maximum flight distance reached. 
So I can't go any further than that. And that is 324 feet. So with your cell phone, you can't go further than that unless, um, yeah, you don't even want to change it to go further because this thing won't even be in control. Cool, so we do still have 47% power. So let me do a return to home. Uh, see what this bad boy does when we press return to home and slide it. It should turn and face its home point. And it should make sure it's um, 30 meters or around right around 100 feet um, above its home point. So if it's lower than that, it'll raise up. You know what I mean? And then it will come home. Uh, okay, so I did initiate the return to home. Uh oh, what's happening? Let's try that again. It didn't seem to work that time. Okay, yeah, it didn't register that first time. Maybe I didn't push it all the way. So it is going to turn to face your home position. Now it's going up to make sure it's um, 30 meters above this elevation it launched. You saw it went up. It's still going up, 6.9. 6.7 miles per hour. Oh, it's just going. Never mind. It went up already and it's coming back now. So, gosh, it's like right in the sun, but it's coming back. And let me see if I can adjust the gimbal while it's doing this. Can I? Nope, not while it's coming back. You see this little button I'm pressing on the left goes from control sticks to gimbal control. But I think once you reach your home point here and it starts coming down now it's turning to the exact heading it launched from i believe i'm not sure but let's see if we can move the gimbal now oh can we i'm trying to move the gimbal but i can't well, let's just see how close it lands. It's in its return to home. So around seven feet, it stopped and it started going really slow. Well, okay, yeah, it's in the exact same heading as it was when we started. And look at that, that's great. I'm gonna stop the recording. So we'll save. Um, what I did notice with this one, you wanna be careful, do not power this off if you before you stop the recording. Oh, another butterfly's checking it out. But check out this accuracy. So I launched with the body right here in the middle of the H. And that is literally only about two to three inches off. So really good with its um, return to home accuracy. I did do the compass cal. So you may want to do a compass cal like I did where you're going to be flying. You saw it only took like 10 seconds to do that. So highly recommended to do that. We've got 31% left. So you know what I'm gonna do now? Is I'm gonna leave this thing here. Um, I'm gonna leave the screen up, but I'm gonna power off my phone like this. I'm gonna put it in my pocket and I'm gonna get Sanaya here. I'm gonna simulate like if we're on vacation and I don't even want to use my phone. I just want to take a selfie shot. Um, we're going to turn it on, pick it up, and we're going to launch from our hand. And the way you do this is, um, okay, come over here, honey. Somebody's going to help me out with this. Is say we're on vacation and we're getting ready to go. What we do is we just double tap the power. So click, click, hold it in your hand. You're going to see the lights are yellow. It recognized my face. Whoa, careful of that. I probably should have had my hand out a little bit more. But you can see just from the wind blowing this way, it did push it over a little bit. So careful in the wind. So now it's kind of looking for my hand. So now I want to put my hand in front of it. Now when you're in this mode, there we go. So you see the lights turned green. When you're in this mode, it's only going to do pictures. So keep that in mind when you're in hand gesture control. Pictures only, and it's looking for your hand. And you see how it's green? Now say we want to position it where we want. Let's try and go around in the circle real quick, see how responsive it is. Cool, we can also go up, down. Oh, okay, lost my hand there for a sec. Okay, 
Let me get it around here and then I'm gonna take a close-up picture of me and Sonia. I've, keep in mind that you can't do videos right now, so no videos going on. I'm gonna get it right about there. Whoops, still was trying to track my hand. You wanna close your fist, I forgot about that. So yeah, over there, close your fist, drop it, it'll stay there. Now Sonia's gonna come right here. I don't know if I'm in the picture or not, but I should be putting my hand kind of where my face is and get it at that height or whatever you whatever you want to do. So now I'm going to make this like picture icon here. And let's see if it can do a close up shot of us. We should be seeing the red lights start to blink. <laughs> Maybe it can do it. I don't know. I know it can do it if we do this. See my hand do the wave goodbye it'll go up like that okay and now let me do the the shot there we go so let's show shaka lights blink slow blink fast and then they're green again so it's taking pictures again shit shaka ah do something crazy let's do this let's do it one more time before it lands Okay, crazy shots. Oh, now it's landing. Okay, so remember when you're doing this and the battery's low, it's just gonna kind of land wherever it is and hover there until you do something. And the thing about this one, so I turned the phone back on, is when it's in this state, you can't like reach under it. So you have to get your phone back out of your pocket and you have to either control it or tell it to land or something. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cancel out a landing. I'm gonna cancel out of everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and just fly it until the battery has a complete depletion and it goes into self landing. You can see that it keeps dropping even though I bring it up. You know, at least it gives you that ability to reposition it in emergencies if you need to okay let me get it over the um the landing pad here so say you're on a side of a cliff or something and you need to get it closer to you even though the battery's low you can still do that and i also want to see if i can cancel out of that landing so if we go down and then it's going to give me the warning do you want to land i'm going to try to slide yes but then cancel with the throttle let's see if that works Yep, see that? I canceled it with the throttle. So I wouldn't have lost my Mavic if DJI would have enabled that. Um, anyway, there we go. So now it's critically low. It's just gonna land wherever it is when it's that low. And you really wanna turn it off as soon as possible. We have zero battery power. So you really don't wanna let it get that low, if at all possible. Let's just power this off. You see how it's super low. Hopefully DJI does have a fail safe for the battery where it won't get so low that it drops below like three volts per cell. I'm assuming that they would have a, um, you know, I'm assuming that they would have a fail safe cutoff where it wouldn't get so low and ruin the battery. But that's one battery guys. Let me pop in the next battery. We kind of got to see how it is with the um, little bit in the gesture control. What I'll do is I'll pop in the next battery and we'll just do, we'll finish the gesture control. And then we're going to do active track on Sanaya. And I'm going to have her, you know, we'll do the circular active track functions. And then I'm going to have her walk over in the trees while it's following her and see what it does. Okay guys, so I just popped the new battery in. It's only been about five minutes and... Um, Actually, everything is totally cool. Has, hasn't even been five minutes, maybe like three minutes. Pop the new battery in. What we're gonna do now is I'm not even gonna turn my cell phone on and connect to this. I'm not even gonna start up the G DJI Go 4 app. This is kind of cool because if you just wanna pull it out and you actually don't have your phone available or you're just trying to get that really quick shot in front of something, get a selfie or something, you can actually do this. So you don't have to put it down or anything. You just power on. So click and hold, put it on your hand until it kind of powers up. Try to keep probably as still as possible and have the thing powering up. And all we're kind of really trying to do is um, 
you know let it initialize it's not going to really matter if it gets gps lock because we're not going to be able to fly far away anyway and it's not going to be using its return to home you can't fly far with just your hand so there we go so we're booted up we need to get a shot really quick okay quick everybody get you know get in view double click the power button click click put it in your hand so it launches for some reason it wants to go to the right it's not even windy I'm not sure what that is. Anyway, okay. Look at my hand, gesture control, waiting for the green lights in the front. Is it gonna give us any green lights? No, yes, there we go, okay. All right, took it a while to see what's going on. So now I can control it up and down, left and right, close up. And we wanna get this shot, so I'm gonna wave you know, I thought you could take a, a shot with it this close too. For some reason it wasn't working. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna take my hands away, so it's red. And then do this gesture to take a picture. I think it is taking pictures. Is it? Anyway, I'll have those up on the screen if they are. If not, it seems like it's not really super reliable to take close up shots. Let's try that again. It keeps trying to like, Anyway, I guess it's not really too reliable to take super close-up shots, but it lets you know how it works and the problems it might have. So I'm gonna go about head high here, and I'm gonna wave it away. Goodbye. So it should kinda keep us you know, locked in a little bit of where we are. And then we're gonna do a crazy pose again. Oh yeah, so it's tracking us. Let's do this, okay. So when you wave it away, it goes to that distance. And then watch, we can move around, we can adjust our family for our photo. It's using active track to make sure we're in view, or at least I'm in view and everybody has, would have to follow me. Um, so let me get over, yeah, so it's just doing regular active track. So say we're in a location and we need to set everybody up. It should keep following us. Let's see how it does in the sun. Yeah, it's doing good. Okay, guys, everybody get over here. Come on over here, Sanaya. <laughs> okay, let's just do this shot. Right here, so hopefully we're in view. Come close. We'll go ahead and do our picture. Do our camera gesture. Red lights are blinking. Ah, do a crazy shot. Oh, ah. <laughs> Wow, so it kind of went down. Oh, it went down and it's coming close. Okay. I didn't think I called it back. Oh, you know why? Because I did the Y, the, I put my hands up. Let's go over that again. So I'm gonna wave it away. Go fly away. Look at my hand. Fly up. Oh, is it working? Look at my hand, position it. Follow my hand, come on now. Come on, Spark. Be a good boy. So you may have these issues, but this is good to know, you know. I don't want it to land. You gotta be kind of careful with your hand. You might get confused. Wave it away. Okay, there we go. A couple tries and it works. All right, so we wanna do that again. You wanna take a picture? Come close, honey. Just looking at my hands, lights are blinking. We're gonna take a photo. Okay, just don't, don't put your hands up in a Y unless you want it to do this. You see how it's gonna lower? And then it should come right up to my face where I launched from. There we go, so that's how the gesture control works. Okay, so now we're gonna track Sanaya. Um, that was cool, I have those pictures popped up on the screen, those goofy little pictures. I'm gonna go ahead and start recording the um, screen recorder again, so you guys can see what's going on. I'm gonna go into DJI, um, go for cool so even if you don't land it it connects automatically I'm going into go fly in the go for app and there we are so we do have everything I'm gonna record oh it's still in picture mode so I'm gonna go out of picture mode 
Oh, okay, so it's in gesture control. You see on the left, there's a little person with the Y. You would have to get out of gesture control if you just did that process that I did. So, um, let's go ahead and try a active track on Sanaya. So I'm gonna press active track. And I'm gonna, there she is. Okay, let's back up a little, honey. I'm clicking on her. Looks like I need to go a little higher. I think we're a little bit too low. There we go. Let's go about there. Now I'm gonna press go on her. I forgot to record, so I also wanna record with the camera. Okay, so honey, why don't you just run in a circle around us? Go. Come back. Come back. It wasn't following you. Come back quick. We only have 65% battery left. Okay, let's try that again. Let's line her up. Boom. Active track. Click on Sanaya. There we go. So if you have problems, um, make sure you press this little thing on the bottom to get off of the stick controls. And so you can go into active track. So I'm gonna press go on Sanaya again. There we go. And if I press that slider, it would circle around her, but I just wanted to track her. So just walk and then run. So walk that way. That's tracking her. Okay, keep walking. Now run, do a turn and run this way and go around the chair. There we go. So I'm not doing anything. It's just automatically tracking her. Good. This would be so neat for, let's see what happens if I get in the way. Oh, it lost her behind me, keep going. Okay, stop. Cool. So it's still tracking here, good. It's doing pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna slide this slider and it's gonna start circling her while it's tracking her. So check this out. So I'm gonna go to half of this bar, 50, 50-ish. Okay, honey, now do the same thing where you kind of walk and then run. So it's doing the circle while it's following her. Now go straight. Just go straight and then stop by the fence and then turn around. It's still trying to circle her. Okay, stop. Come back, come back, quick. I don't want it to hit the... Oh, okay, there we go, it lost tracking. Okay, I'm gonna press stop. So apparently the wall over there confused her of, of uh, bushes and stuff. So I'm going back into manual, manual control and we'll go ahead and bring it on back manually. So you probably want to have your phone handy in case it loses tracking. Okay, honey, now I'm going to track you again. And you're going you're gonna to go over by those trees and we're going to see how it follows you, okay? Okay, so I'm pressing that button on the bottom, getting Sanaya in view, pressing go. Okay, go for it. Do a jog, go through the fence. I better follow her because <laughs> I want to see what's going to happen. Okay, so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, keep going. Keep going under the tree. Uh, okay, it stop, stop. Okay, so it stopped at the tree. See that? So it's not going any further. It's just not gonna hit those branches. So that's cool. So I'm gonna bring it back. Come on back, honey. I'm gonna bring it on back. And I think what you can do is um, you can tell it if you wanted to, if you go into the options here. You can actually tell it to move around the obstacle, maybe. Um, no, you can't. So we'll just automatically hover. Yeah, so this one doesn't do that, with the cell phone at least. So I remember some of the other more advanced phantoms, you could tell it to go up and over an obstacle or go around an obstacle, but this one will just stop. So keep that in mind also. Okay, 39% battery power. Let's do some more stuff. Okay, Sanaya, so get in front of the camera over here. A little, go back up a little bit. 
Okay. Um, don't want to pitch the camera up. If that happens, you got to push that again. Oops, there she is. Okay. It actually does pitch itself up to find the object you want. Okay, cool. So now let's try and follow her with some of these other functions. Um, I want to go out of the track. So I'm pressing on the person again. I'm pressing cancel. I want to cancel. Stop. Stop back the track. Okay, you got to press stop. We're burning battery power. All right, quick shot. Chinese, no idea what that's saying. Okay, so you can do dronies and stuff. There's power lines over there, so I'm not gonna do that, but it does show you um, what that's all about. You can do all these different things on the bottom. You can see how you can do drony, circle, helix, and rocket. Let's try a rocket. What do you say? Okay, I'm gonna go with you here. And I'm hoping that it's gonna keep us in shot. It should just kind of pull up and away and keep us in shot. Let's go, go for it, go. It's recording. Oh, it's gonna hit those trees. Stop. <laughs> so really make sure you have enough room, man, if you're ever gonna try that. Okay, that sticks back on the screen, coming back forward. I thought Rocket was gonna go up. That was weird. Let's try that again. Maybe I didn't pick Rocket or something. Quick shot. Come on, quick shot, quick shot. Give me my options. Quick shot, give me my options. Don't have a lot of time. What am I waiting for? Okay, I don't know what it's doing. I'm pressing quick shot and it's not giving me the options on which quick shot to do. Okay, DJI, still a little bit work that needs to be done here. Okay, battery level's low, I'm gonna cancel that. Let's try tripod. Tripod should just be super slow flying. And you can't do anything because the battery's low. So gosh, man, to give this demo, you need a lot of batteries. <laughs> All right, I guess that's gonna do it. Um, yeah, so the battery is not enough to do any of these advanced functions, so. But it has, you know, most of the same functions as like the Mavic does. And they all seem to work pretty good. A little bit weird on that quick shot. It didn't want to give me the menu back. I'm just flying it around until the battery dies here. I noticed I was getting like 14 minutes until it like completely had to land. But those are my two batteries. I think we went through most of the stuff. I'm just gonna press on the controller again, again, here on the left. And we also got like tap fly, you know. Let's see if I press tap fly, if it'll even work. Since the battery's low. Oh, too close, I tapped. There we go, go. Let's try to fly over there. Oh, tap fly works when the battery's low. So you see, that's kind of neat. It puts a grid on the ground critically low. Okay, we can't do any more stuff because it's going to want to land. It looks like you can do tap fly. I want to press cancel because I don't want to land right over there. So I think that's a really good feature though. At least you can bring it back and, and you can give it some uh, vertical thrust too when the battery's this low. All that kind of stuff. If you need to emergency takeover when the battery is super critical so keep it close you know that happens so ah, pretty neat it doesn't even let me really go into any of the advanced functions to show you anymore since the battery is so low let's go ahead and just let's let it do another critical low battery landing Right here, I'm just trying to get it over the center of that guy. Let's see what happens if we skyrocket it up. If it'll 
Okay, so it won't let me go up. It's critical coming down, 0% power on the battery, but it's able to safely land. That's good. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and um, run through like a pros and cons now before this thing um, gets too low and I ruin these batteries. You really shouldn't be going that low on the batteries anyway. Um, and it looks like it did stop the recording, so hopefully that recorded. Like when it got super critical, it looked like it stopped recording. But anyway, I have up on the screen, we did our normal flight. We tried the quick shot, so you have those just kind of selfie quick shots. That got a little bit weird, confusing. The, the menu wouldn't pop back up. And I can't even, you know, you can't even activate it when the battery's too low. Active track worked really good. There's a couple of other functions in the active track where you can follow somebody from the side, all that kind of stuff. Tap fly, you know, if you really don't know how to control, you can just tap. I like how they put that grid on the ground so you know exactly where it's gonna fly to. The older versions, it would just keep going straight. So that's good. Um, the tripod, we didn't get to try, I tried it, but what it does is it just makes everything super slow. So you're not gonna see any jerkiness whatsoever and it works pretty darn good. And then we also tried the gesture control, which worked fairly good. You can see how, um, let me turn this off before it gets too low. So remember, click once, click and hold, lights go down, turns off. Um, what I was saying was you could see how in the gesture control, with this guy, it does look like it's a little bit influenced by where the sun is in the sky. So optimally, you want the sun to be up. Because what I was noticing is when I had my hand, I was controlling it, which is funny because you usually want the sun, you know, shining on you when you're taking a photo. But when that happens and the sun is too much on your hand, like too low in the sky, it seems like the pickup for the tracking of your hand has a harder time. So something that DJI might need to work on, it seemed like if I had it like over here, over here, or if I had the sun to my back, the hand tracking worked a lot better. But still a cool function. I mean, they're gonna be definitely updating that. I'm, I wouldn't doubt that they're gonna make that all work a little better. It does work decent how it is out of the box. Again, I'll have had the video up on the screen um, so you can see the video of, you know, the actual, this only does 1080, remember, so you're not going to get that 4K like the Mavic. And so you'll see how stable that was with the flying I did, and also I'll have had the controls recorded up on the screen. So you could follow along, see what I was doing, see what I was pressing. So the flight time, um, I will have that pop up on the screen, but I believe that's 14 minutes until critical low force landing, and you can't do anything else. I do love how you can pop this thing open and stick a micro SD, micro USB plug in there and just plug it from your cigarette lighter in your car if you wanted to. You know, it's gonna charge slower and you only can charge one battery that way. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to get like a little inverter and plug the main um, power hub into your car to plug multiple, to charge multiple batteries. But it was cool because before I did this flight test, I was at home and I just wanted to make sure I was up to date on the software. And I, I was rushing out the door and I didn't have time to recharge it on the charger. So while I was driving up here, I just took the supplied white cable they give you and plugged it into my cigarette lighter, cell phone charger and into here. And it topped off the battery and charged it within 10 minutes, you know five to ten minutes till I got here and that battery was was topped off so that's kind of a cool feature lighting's great no problem with lighting you saw I was having a little bit of a hard time with I'm not even sure if you're able to really take pictures close up I couldn't really get it to register my my hand gesture for the pictures until I waved it away and it went to its like active track hand gesture only mode and then I could get it to kind of take the pictures if you're just using the hand gesture hand control um, and I think that's a that's a safe distance away. You saw how far it went away if you're just controlling it with your hands, not your phone. And that's also kind of cool too, how you can, if your cell phone's in your pocket, you can still control the whole drone being only pictures and limited range away from you just by having your hand. You don't even have to have it connected to your phone. So that's kind of neat as well. And my phone from those two flights, I was 100% when I started. From those two flights and recording my phone for you guys to see, my phone's at 57%. So it will eat some power in your phone. 
but you know, I got two batteries worth at still over 50% on my phone. The return to home, the return to home was awesome. That worked spot on as long as you do your compass cal. Man, I was, you can see how I took off from right here, right on the middle of this little white line. And when it came back, it landed just about right there. So a couple inches away, very happy with this uh, return to home. I'm not sure if it's using the cameras to do any kind of sensing. I know the lasers and the camera here is mainly for, for height, but maybe it is using those and incorporating them for its, um, its return to home accuracy. I'm not too sure about that. A couple of cons were the arms. I'm sure in the next model, they're probably gonna have the arms fold so you can just stuff this thing in your pocket, but that's kind of a con. They made it so small, but they didn't allow you to fold the arms in. Why didn't they do that? Marketing probably, that'll probably be in the next model. Cool guys, so for what it was, the initial flight test, I'm pretty impressed. I'd have to say, you know, Overall, it worked good. I know that this is very new on the market and they are gonna do some software updates to fix a couple of those problems. I wouldn't doubt that I was having. Um, but all in all, a pretty neat device, very compact. And don't miss the flight test part two because I'm gonna be giving it a full on flight test with the controller this flamework combo comes with. Didn't get a chance to do that today because two batteries really isn't enough to give a full demo of all the functions. I need one more battery. I did order the extra battery, so um, the next video will definitely go through whatever I missed in this video and then some. We'll also do some range testing with the controller, like I was saying, and all that. Anyway, guys, I hope you really did enjoy that review. Don't forget I'll be having a couple more parts with the Spark, and don't forget that I had the first uh, part of the review with the unboxing setup and updating as well, and I'll have those videos in the description as they become available. I'm going to be doing a lot more for this one. Uh, again, the controller testing, probably some more stuff I missed with the phone, and also some long-range tests and also um, I don't know if you've seen some of my coastline flights with like the Mavic and stuff and I want to see if I can kind of do that with this one I know this is only a 1080p camera but gosh this gives it like 1.2 1.5 mile miles of range with this uh, flamework combo controller so why not test it see what kind of you know aerial video we can get from long-range video and that's all gonna be coming up anyways Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. And thanks, Sanaya, for helping out. <laughs>